Good day, and welcome to the Yelp fourth quarter 2020 earnings conference call. All participants will be in a listen-only mode. After today's presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchtone phone. To withdraw your question, you may press star then two. Should you need assistance, please signal a conference specialist by pressing the star key followed by zero. Please note this event is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to James Milne, Senior Vice President, Finance and Investor Relations at Yelp. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us on Yelp's fourth quarter and full year 2020 earnings conference call. Joining me today are Yelp's Chief Executive Officer, Jeremy Stoppelman, Chief Financial Officer, David Schwarzbach, and Chief Operating Officer, Jed Nockman. We published a shareholder letter on our investor relations website and with the SEC and hope everyone had a chance to read it. We'll provide some brief opening comments and then turn to your questions. Now I'll read our safe harbor statement. We'll make certain statements today that are forward-looking and involve a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially. Please note that these forward-looking statements reflect our opinions only as of the date of this call, and we undertake no obligation to revise or publicly release the results of any revision to these forward-looking statements in light of new information or future events. In addition, we are subject to a number of risks that may significantly impact our business and financial results. Please refer to our SEC filings, as well as our shareholder letter, for a more detailed description of the risk factors that may affect our results. During our call today, we'll discuss adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin, which are non-GAAP financial measures. These measures should not be considered in isolation from or as a substitute for financial information prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. In our shareholder letter released this afternoon and our filings with the SEC, each of which is posted on our website, you will find additional disclosures regarding these non-GAAP financial measures, as well as historical reconciliations of GAAP net income to both adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin. And with that, I will turn the call over to Jeremy. Thanks, James, and welcome, everyone. While 2020 was a challenging year for Yelp, our mission of connecting people to great local businesses has never been more relevant. In addition to helping local businesses stay connected to their customers during the pandemic, we completed a business transformation. I am proud of the significant progress made on our long-term strategic initiatives by all of our teams under extremely difficult circumstances. We achieved this progress through an elevated pace of product innovation, delivering more functionality and value to both consumers and businesses in our local communities. Yelp continued to demonstrate its relevance to consumers as a source of trusted reviews and content. In 2020, Yelp reviews maintained solid year-over-year -year growth as our users contributed nearly 19 million reviews. As a complement to our valuable review content, our product teams rolled out a series of COVID-19 features that enable local businesses to communicate up-to-date information to their customers, highlighting updated hours and health and safety measures. While our consumer traffic remained below 2019 levels at the end of the fourth quarter, and we saw a slight decrease in activity during the winter, the positive trends we observed over the summer as COVID cases declined gives us confidence that engagement will return organically as more people are inoculated and restrictions ease. While it's still quite early, COVID case counts nationally are once again falling, and in early February, we have seen signs of more consumer activity. For businesses navigating the restrictions of the pandemic, we launched multiple offerings to drive more value in new ways. We launched a new profile product, Yelp Logo, and scaled Yelp Connect, a quick and easy way to share updates with customers to approximately 75,000 locations by the end of the year as part of a bundled offering for multi-location customers. We continued to differentiate the home and local services experience and further enhanced our request to quote flows and advertising matching technology. This helped increase the percentage of monetized leads in the home and local services category, driving a mid-single-digit percentage increase in category revenue year-over-year year for both the fourth quarter and full year 2020. 
For those businesses in categories particularly hard hit by the pandemic, we extended approximately $37 million of COVID-19 relief in the form of waived advertising fees and free products and services in 2020. Despite the difficulties that local economies faced over the last year, we are pleased that our efforts resulted in strong improvements in the retention rate for non-term advertiser budgets. This increased by 13% year over year in 2020 and ended the year up approximately 25% year over year in the third and fourth quarters. Operationally, we accelerated our go-to-market mix shift towards multi-location and self-serve. Both channels have historically exhibited superior revenue retention characteristics compared to local sales, and as a result, we believe overall revenue retention and profitability will continue to improve as they make up a greater portion of our advertising revenue. After making the difficult decision to reduce the size of our local sales force by half in April, we continued investing in business-facing products to drive more of our revenue through our self-serve channel. Self-serve revenue returned to year-over-year -year growth in the third quarter as a result then accelerated to nearly 25% year-over-year growth in the fourth quarter, ending the year as a mid-teens percentage of advertising revenue overall. As we look to the year ahead, we are first and foremost focused on building on our recovery in the second half of 2020 to establish sustainable growth momentum and capture more of the large opportunity in local advertising. To achieve this, we plan to invest behind our key strategic initiatives. These include growing services revenue through improved monetization, accelerating our growth through our self-serve and multi-location channels, and delivering more value to advertisers through our offerings and advertising platform. We believe that Yelp is more important than ever to consumers and local businesses. With the structural changes we made to our business and a robust product roadmap planned out against our growth initiatives, we are confident in our ability to drive profitable growth over the long term. With that, I'd like to turn it over to David. Thanks, Jeremy. We entered the fourth quarter with considerable uncertainty around the impact that rapidly escalating COVID cases would have on our business. Notwithstanding broad-based shelter-in-place orders and increased restrictions, we continue to see impressive year-over-year -year improvement in revenue retention. In addition, paying advertising locations further increased from the third quarter to reach 520,000 in the fourth quarter a decline of just 8% year over year. As a result, net revenue reached $233 million, a 13% year over year decline. Our revenue performance combined with continued expense management enabled us to deliver $21 million of net income and $60 million of adjusted EBITDA. This represents a 26% adjusted EBITDA margin and demonstrates the potential leverage in our model. Our lower than expected expenses were principally the result of lower than forecasted headcount. We have increased our operational focus on hiring outside of the Bay Area. With nearly an entire year as a fully remote organization, we are confident in our team's ability to maintain productivity while working from home. As a result, we plan to continue operating with a more distributed workforce, which we believe will enable us to expand our presence in lower cost markets and reduce our real estate footprint. During the fourth quarter, we reinitiated our share repurchase program. As of February 9th, we had deployed $49 million to repurchase approximately 1.6 million shares and an average price of $31.34 per share. We currently have approximately $220 million remaining under our share repurchase authorization. We plan to continue our share repurchase program subject to economic and market conditions. Our cash balance increased modestly from the third quarter to $596 million at the end of the fourth quarter. Turning to our outlook, we anticipate first quarter net revenue will fall between $220 million and $230 million. In addition to ongoing COVID-19 related headwinds, it's important to recognize that our first quarter net revenue is typically lower than our fourth quarter due to seasonality. On the expense side, we plan to invest in our growth initiatives. This includes increasing our product investments as we focus on opportunities in self-serve and our services category. While we have gained efficiency in our local sales channel, we intend to invest selectively in our multi-location sales team and in performance marketing to support our self-serve channel. As a result, we anticipate that first quarter operating expenses will increase from the fourth quarter with first quarter 2021 adjusted EBITDA 
between $20 million and $30 million. Turning to the full year, we expect 2021 net revenue between $985 million and just over $1 billion at 1005. We expect overall economic activity to increase in the second half as the virus abates and the economy recovers, but do not anticipate a full recovery for the U.S. economy before next year. We expect 2021 adjusted EBITDA will fall within the range of $150 million to $170 million, reflecting margin improvement from the first half to the second half. With our planned investments in our product and engineering team in 2021, continued execution on home and local services monetization, and a strengthening U.S. economy, we are focused on achieving mid-teens percentage annual revenue growth in 2022, as well as adjusted EBITDA margins exceeding 20%. Given the structural improvements to our business model driven by our transformation, we see significant opportunity for margin improvement over the long term. I also want to mention that we have introduced new key metrics in our Q4 and full year 2020 shareholder letter to reflect the transformation we have made to our business, as well as what we believe will be the key drivers in our next phase of growth. We've provided three years of historical data in the shareholder letter and look forward to reporting on them in our first quarter earnings call. In closing, we believe we're very well positioned as the economic recovery continues. We look forward to building our revenue momentum and strengthening margins as COVID recedes later this year. With that, operator, please open up the line for questions. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star and then one on your touchtone phone. If you are using a speaker phone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. The first question today comes from Colin Sebastian with Baird. Please go ahead. All right, good afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Um, have two questions for me, please. Um, one, at a higher level, with the recovery in your business clearly evident, and as we look ahead now to, to pretty strong growth, uh, can you clarify the drivers of that from a from an advertiser point of view? Is it is it a larger share of wallet per advertiser, or is it the broadening of the platform to attract a larger number of advertisers? And then, and then secondly, a bit more granular regarding the number of products offered on a, on a bundled or subscription basis, can you just give us a sense for the portion of advertisers or, or budgets that are, that are being monetized this way? Thank you. Sure, I can take that question. This is uh, this is Jed speaking. So, in, in, in terms of the drivers going into next year, you know, it, it, it's really a combination of both uh, expanding the footprint and and hitting more local businesses, um, as well as you know, uh, driving the retention component of our our business. You saw really strong trends over the course of 2020 on the retention side. You know, we saw 25 percent improvements in the fourth quarter, um, you know, and this was driven by, um, you know, really product innovation. Number one, uh, we were able to introduce new products uh, into in, into a bundle. Uh, we just started bundling in Connect. Uh, we have Yelp logo that was introduced and. Uh, you know, we revamped our business owner's account into a kind of a more modern design with reporting and analytics included, uh, you know, things like an, an ad impression heat map. Um, and so that continued innovation where we have a, you know, kind of a long pipeline uh, to go from a product perspective uh, will we'll continue to, to, to drive growth. I think if you, you also look at the uh, channel mix, um, we're seeing continued momentum in both self-serve as well as the multi-location segments of the business. And, and we believe we're really well positioned in both of those areas going into into 2021. Um, in terms of the second question on um, on uh, the you know percentage of of profile products that we end up monetizing, it's about a three to one ratio adds to profile products, um, and you know that's great that we're able to go monetize those, but we also see a benefit on the retention side of bundling those in, and so the more value that we can offer, um, kind of with the complete package, uh, we see that uh, driving growth as well. Right. And I guess just adding to the, the 
the first part there, you know, I'd also call out, uh, you know, increasing monetization on the services side. We've made progress there with 20% uh, of our leads monetized, but we see, uh, you know, a deep well of ideas and product enhancements to keep moving that up in the right direction. Thanks, guys. Sure. The next question comes from Andrew Boone of JMP Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking the question. Um, I've got two, please. So one, just in terms of the rebound that you guys saw in 1Q more recently, can you talk about that and just kind of how broad was that? What sectors was that? Can you help just quantify it a little bit? And the number two, on the product side, I think you rolled out new ad objectives and keyword targeting um, late last year. Can you talk about uptake here and just the extent that it's improving ROI for advertisers? Thank you. So I can take. Uh, let me take that second one first. This is this is Jed speaking. Um, you know, you know, we certainly have added control features um, over the past couple of years, and you know, we have such a broad client base that we're we're seeing uptick uh, certainly among certain segments. When you kind of look at that mid market segment, uh, they tend to want to have more control of their advertising campaigns. Uh, things like service offerings and the ability to negative keyword target, um, and uh, you know, there's there's still some some road there in terms of other features that we can add to that. And uh, on your question around rebound, I think you're probably talking about you know, traffic trends. Uh, you know, if you go back to the summer uh, of 2020, as we saw virus counts decline, we saw traffic uh, recover uh, pretty substantially. And so that gives us a lot of confidence in how this is all going to play out. As we got towards uh, you know the end of the year, virus counts took off, uh, and we saw some some modest uh, impact to consumer activity. You know, people get scared, restrictions get in place, and, and so they you know stop transacting and going out and about and, and doing their business. You know, one thing that that gives us some encouragement, uh, you know, more recently is as we look at trends in, in early February. And granted, it's, you know, it's early days, but virus counts, uh, as many of you probably have followed, have started declining uh, you know, pretty dramatically uh, in recent weeks. And so we are seeing uh, a pickup once again with uh, consumer activity, but, it, but it's still early. Uh, but that, that gives us some, some confidence that it's going to play out pretty consistently across the year. Thank you. The next question is from Lee Horowitz of Evercore ISI. Please go ahead. Great. Thanks for the question. Uh, two related ones, if I could. Um, given the impressive new product cadence you, you've seen recently, can you help stack rank some of the most important products we should be thinking about in 21 and 22 from a strategic perspective in terms of reaching your revenue goals? And similarly, can you help us uh, maybe bifurcate our thinking in 21 and 22 as it relates to the, the mid-teens growth um, between the drivers of, of CPC and, and click growth? Anything there would be helpful as well. Thanks so much. Hi, hi Lee. I'll, I'll try and tackle the, the first part here. Um, so as we think about revenue growth, you know, driven by product, there's a few buckets that, that we focus on. Uh, you know, one I mentioned earlier, which is increasing monetization, uh, primarily by better monetizing our leads. So we have tremendous organic traffic, uh, and we currently only monetize, particularly in the services, uh, home local services categories, we're only monetizing about 20%. So that gives us a lot of room for better matching, uh, out, you know, enhancements to our ad targeting, our request to quote matching algorithms. There's just a lot of under the hood kind of enhancements that we can do there that, that we've done before. We, we're familiar with these. Obviously, there's new technologies we can layer on, but we have a long track record and confidence behind these product initiatives. We also want to continue iterating on self-serve and multi-location, providing you know, new tools to our multi-location team, new products uh, to, to sell into that segment. And on the self-serve side, it's about ironing out flows, reducing friction, uh, providing you know, new features and functionality like some of the profile products we've launched that you know, bring people into the self-serve flow uh, and allow them to transact on their own, which actually flows then into retention, which is you know, the really big lever is we're 
successfully talking to you know thousands of businesses all the time. And when we bring them in, the best thing we can do is keep them in. And so it's really about delivering more value to our advertisers at the end of the day. And if they're spending money with us, they're feeling a positive ROI, uh, both just in kind of the intangible, uh, you know, they're seeing stats and metrics that, that make them feel confident. But also the most important thing is their business is doing better. I think that's going to deliver value over the long term. And that's going to you know, deliver the outlook that, that we put out for, for this year and, and beyond into 22. Emily, this is David. Just to follow up on what Jeremy was saying, one of the reasons that we have shifted the metrics um, very much is to reflect um, the point that Jeremy just made, which is by delivering more value to advertisers, by providing them with more clicks at better CPCs, not only do they does their business do better, but we see higher retention. And so our expectation is over the year, we will see a rebound in clicks with the overall recovery of the business. Um, what's equally important, though, is we continue to invest on the product side. We think that we can continue to improve on matching. And we also think that by bringing new ad formats that we can really deliver uh, additional value that both benefits advertisers as well as consumers. So both of those, the, the metric actually goes hand in hand uh, with the strategy that we're deploying. Great, thanks so much. The next question is from Chris Kuntarich of Data Bank. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, maybe just starting within the services businesses, you, you guys were slightly ahead of where you were a year ago on revenue, but uh, still behind on paid locations versus 4Q19. Just curious if we should be thinking about this uh, this delta here on the on the business location side. Is uh, are these business closures, or are there still pockets or prior advertisers that were turning off in 4Q for seasonal reasons um, that yeah weren't turned off in 4Q19? Uh, and then uh, within the restaurant and retail, uh, retail and other segment, uh, maybe just looking back to 2019, can you, can you talk about like what the driver was there for average revenue per location to decrease? And if that's how we should be thinking about, was it, is there any sort of mixed dynamics going on there that we should be aware of as, as you bring in new locations that are um, driving that average monetization down? Thanks. Yeah, I can take um, t take that uh, first question uh, around paid location. So, you know, we're down total for Yelp about eight percent year over year from a from a PAL perspective. Um, you know, and that is up thirty eight percent from from kind of the Q two lows during uh, kind of the depths of of the pandemic. Um, and you know, we see varied behavior amongst different sets of of customers. Certainly, we've been strong in the service lo on the service location side. Um, one of the things we were really happy about is the fact that we, you know, gave relief um, and were able to maintain relationships with a lot of our customers, both on the multi loc side as well as the, the local side. Um, and, you know, some of those folks came back, albeit maybe at a more tepid level, but we were able to keep that relationship and anticipate that we'll be able to continue to kind of drive monetization from a, from a, a, on a per location basis. Um, and then uh, on the second one, David, you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that is an important dynamic is we uh, look at average revenue per paying advertising location is the mix between our multi-location partners versus our uh, SMB customers. And so what we've seen over time is that we've been increasing the number of multi-location advertisers that are with us as a share of paying advertising locations and so that has an effect on the amount that they're paying. I think the, the really important takeaway overall is that we do see overall that we have an opportunity to drive paying advertising locations both across services um, as well as uh, restaurants, retail, and other. Equally important is we think that this is overall um, from a monetization perspective relatively stable in the near term and so what we are really focused on doing, as we've been talking about, is to continue to drive value to these advertisers 
and continue to see the improvements that we've seen from a retention perspective. Got it, thank you. The next question is from Justin Patterson of KeyBank. Please go ahead. Great, thank you very much. Uh, could you talk about the drivers of requested quote growth more? It sounds like there were some product elements behind that that provided a benefit, but I'm curious if there were any other um, you know, signals you could point to that were driving that healthy acceleration from Q2 all the way into to Q4. And then looking at that more broadly toward the monetized leads to service businesses, you know, where how should we think about just the drivers of you know, monetizing that more going forward. Thank you. All right. Thanks for the question, Justin. So on request to quote growth, there's, you know, a lot of different components there. Um, you know, as we continue to build out the, the flows and functionality, you know, we do see good consumer demand and we have a, a large audience, some of which may not be familiar with request to quote. So I think just, you know, helping educate our consumers uh, on the fact that this flow exists and this uh, experience exists and the fact that it can solve their problem really quickly, uh, you know, is, is one element there. There's also category expansion. Uh, so we're constantly looking to see what categories can we add a request to quote experience to by tailoring it for that specific vertical. There's also uh, matching. So we have an algorithm uh, when you submit that, that is trying to match you with the best business as possible. We continue to refine that. Uh, and you know, the worst thing we can do is, is send you, you know, a, provide a match uh, where it's not relevant and that business can't service you, et cetera, because that's essentially a wasted opportunity. So the more efficient we get at that, uh, the less leads we can essentially waste, uh, which just it creates inventory essentially uh, out of thin air. So I think it's a combination of a bunch of those factors. There's a lot of uh, you know future growth opportunity ahead of us and, and opportunities to refine the product both algorithmically and just in the funnels that, that drive consumers into the flow. And then your second question was around uh, monetized leads. How can we, you know, how can we continue to move that up? You know, do we have a runway there? I think the answer is, you know, 20%. We do feel very confident uh, that there is a long runway there. Um, and you know we do have this this large audience, uh, so I think by providing things like the re request to quote experience, merchandising it better, better ad units, better ad targeting, you know there's a long list of ad related features and functionality that we will continue to plug way on it. And really, we now have a multi year track record of making improvements and driving up the monetized uh, leads percentage. So we feel really confident about that and how it how it feeds into our you know twenty twenty one plan and beyond. Great, thank you. Sure thing. The next, the next question is from Trevor Young of Barclays. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking the questions. Two from me. Um, first, you mentioned the experimental bundling with Connect and the CPC advertising. Can you just give us like an illustrative example as to how much of a discount is offered and what are some of the initial learnings from this and when you expect to roll it out more broadly? And then um, two on what seems to be maybe the longer term potential cost savings on the lower average cost per employee as you shift away from the Bay Area, as well as some of the real estate leasing and subletting initiatives. How much of that is baked into the 2021 guide or is it just more of kind of a long term opportunity? Thank you. Yeah, Trevor, thing. Um, you know, bundling is something that we just started to really get into in earnest in in the beginning of the fourth quarter of this year. Um, and you know, really the the driver there was let's give as much value as possible and and you know try, try to drive on the retention side. And so you know, across the breadth of our profile products, and whether you look at portfolios or Yelp logo or business highlights or Connect, um, you know, making it one of those things that kind of hard to say no to um, as you're going through the, the, the checkout flow. Um, and they, in fact, provide a lot of value and trust for the consumer as well. You know, if, uh, if if you look at you know some of our less established businesses as an example, this is an opportunity for them to to tell their story, um, maybe away from reviews as being the driver until they're able to kind of build up a reputation. And so we're still very early stages on the connect bundling, um, and you know from a pricing perspective, you know we give enough of a discount that it, it's going to 
it's going to drive somebody over the line. Um, although we're continuing to kind of experiment with where that 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 perfect uh, kind of match from a pricing perspective is. And Trevor, this is David. Just to to follow up on your question around uh, expenses. So in terms of our employee base, one of the things that we are very focused on is hiring outside of the San Francisco Bay Area. And we will, moving forward, be working on a much more distributed basis. So that enables us to hire across the U.S. We've also been hiring uh, in Canada, uh, particularly in the Toronto area, and in the U.K. And so that's something that's going to play out over several years. And then in terms of our real estate expense, um, we do spend about $50 million a year on real estate. Um, at the beginning of 2020, we had uh, about 6,000 employees. And at the end of the year, we were just below 4,000. Um, and then many of them are going to be working on a uh, distributed basis, which means they're either always working from home or only coming into the office a few days a week. So we definitely see an opportunity to uh, compress our real estate footprint, but that's going to also take a little bit of time to play out. So in terms of 2021 outlook, we only have a modest amount of savings coming this year as we go through the process of uh, adjusting how much real estate we have. So that will start to show up more in 2022. Great, thanks. The next question is from Miguel Aronian of Wedbush. Please go ahead. Hey guys, good afternoon. Thanks for taking the questions. I have a couple of follow-ups um, on some of the other questions. Just on the um, on the dynamics of the, the paying locations being down um, 8%, I wonder if we could dig in a, a little bit more into um, maybe the, the varying degrees of strength or, or weakness across the board. Like, you know, what's kind of the, the strongest and what's what's the growth there and what's been the weakest and what's what's the the, the, the decline there. Um, you know, like I, uh, I would think that, um, you know, quick serve restaurants are, are, are up a lot. They've seen a lot of strength and they've done well in, in, in the pandemic. So that's um, that's the first one. And then on request a quote, um, curious what you're seeing. You know, some of what we're seeing in the market is, um, you know, service providers being, uh, pretty busy and, and at capacity and uh, dialing back some of their ad spend. Um, are you guys seeing similar dynamics? I, I know your your monetized leads is up uh, 20%. And I'm just wondering how, how that is factoring and for you guys in request quote. Cool. Thanks. Sure, I can tackle the PAL question. Um, you know, certainly – We've seen strength across home and local uh, across the year relative to other categories, and, you know, that would kind of fall in line with what you would expect. Um, you know, you think about categories like, you know, salons and, you know, massage studios kind of down the line, things that require physical contact, and, and, and we've certainly seen a drop in, in, in those areas as well as, as, as restaurants, obviously. Um, you know, so, so I would say, you know, the dynamic is we're really, um, uh, you know, relatively speaking, still pretty strong on the uh, on the home and local side, and you know, multi local also is 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 its own um, its own beast in terms of the the recovery. You have you know quick serve, which you mentioned, which has really thrived in this environment environment, albeit in a different way. Uh, we see retail with buy online, pick up in store. Um, and what we've really tried to do is, you know, partner with these multi-location businesses and, and kind of provide a solution that they need uh, in the new normal. Um, and so, you know, we have seen a recovery in PALs on the multi-location side from the, from, from the second quarter uh, through the end of the fourth quarter. Um, and as the economy continues to reopen, we expect, you know, depending on the pace, um, different categories to come back in a, in a stronger way. And then uh, on your second question, I think what you're getting at is, you know, there's there's consumer demand in home and local services. Our our businesses uh, in those categories advertising at healthy levels, and I, I would say, you know, we continue to see uh, solid demand uh, for advertising services in those categories. Um, and uh, I think, you know, as you can see, by the progress on 
monetize leads, like we're, we're capturing those leads, we're, we're selling them, you know, our sales force continues to sign up uh, new service pros. Um, so it, it looks pretty good to us. Great, thanks so much. Sure thing. The next question is from Eric Sheridan of UBS. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking the questions and uh, happy new year to the team. Um, maybe a couple, when you think about your broader goals for self-serve and multi-location sales over the long term, how should we be thinking that against the backdrop of which verticals need different approaches to the market to sort of unlock adaptive advertisers that can drive continued momentum on the platform or is it just across an entire breadth of advertisers when you think about putting functionality on top of what you're trying to solve uh, for on a broader uh, revenue base. And when we think about the recovery, um, you know, obviously you guys did a, amazing work in terms of incenting small businesses and, 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 and giving credits and, and things to have people stay on the platform. How should we be think about the breadth of growth in advertisers when you look out to 21 and 22 as a reflection of the recovery versus just the depth of spend per advertisers that you think might evolve as the recovery evolves? Thanks so much. Hi, Eric. This is Jed. I can take the first one. Uh, in, in, in terms of the different goals for the different channels, you know, I would say as a broad-based statement, uh, you know, one of the advantages of Yelp is that we are a horizontal platform and we have a lot of consumer traffic that is, you know, looking for local businesses across all sectors. Certainly, you see some 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 differences amongst uh, you know multi loc versus local. Um, you know we're uh, have a strong and growing you know retail business as an example in the multi loc segment, whereas that may not be as prominent in in in, in the small local businesses. Um, but you know we're we're going to continue to kind of has uh, a ton of upside for us if we can get the monetization correct. Hey, Eric, it's David. So let me talk a little bit uh, about your question, uh, which had two parts to it, I think. One was, how do we see the dynamics playing out across, category, across categories? And then the second is, um, from a uh, revenue per paying advertising location, um, how do we see that playing out across categories as well? So let me take the, the second uh, first. And what we do see is that there is a difference in what advertisers are willing to pay, broadly speaking, on the services side of our business versus the um, restaurant, retail, and other side of our business. And so um, that's one element. And then the second, of course, is we want to really see expansion with our multi-location advertisers. Whereas for our single location, our SMB customers, um, there is less expansion opportunity, and that's where the bundled product uh, really comes in. So what we want to do, of course, is to continue to provide increasing opportunities for services businesses to derive value, and especially on uh, higher ticket items, where they see the value of advertising and are willing to pay more for those those leads, um, say compared to the restaurant retail and other side of the business. Um, one of the things that is important and one of the reasons that we've broken out the new uh, operational and financial metrics for you is that you can start to see those dynamics play out between um, these two broad sets of categories for us and as you could see from a revenue perspective, um, we saw a tremendous amount of compression in restaurant retail and other. And so as the U.S. economy recovers, obviously we will want to participate in that recovery across broadly those categories. On the services side, we feel like uh, we've been able to support home and local services businesses uh, quite well and have continued to see demand there. Some of the other categories that fall into services have seen more of an impact um, from the slowdown in the U.S. economy. So we'd, we would expect some pickup there. And then just to close out on, um, you know, revenue per paying advertising location, um, or I'm right, sorry, uh, to close out, um, overall we see an opportunity both 
across categories as well as opportunities to see um, in pockets opportunity to increase how much we earn per location. That's great. Thanks so much for the color and, and thanks also for those disclosures. Appreciate it. Following no further questions, this concludes our question and answer session. The conference is now also concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect.